Hello and good morning, beautiful people. It's a brand new week on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. A brand new day, endless possibilities, and it's time to wake up and make the best of the day. Hopefully you had a great weekend. Yesterday was Idel Fitri, uh, celebration of breaking of fast. The second of two Islamic holidays celebrated worldwide each year. Of course, we know that most people are still at home. They're home today, especially because it's a public holiday. And at times like this, it is really good to give without expecting something in return. As you know, this week comes with making plans for the week, uh, starting the day the right way, the perfect way, kickstarting with us on the right show, Wake Up Nigeria. It's an absolute pleasure to be here once again with you. My name is Titi Lyo Onison. Thank you so much for joining us, letting us into your homes every morning. And uh, well, we're going to be having Yomi and Mary join us in a little bit. Uh, but uh, just in case you are wondering how you can catch us, you can stream this show live as well as so many other great shows on TVC. That's tvcentertainment.tv and of course on Facebook at TVC Connect. Send in those comments. The love is amazing. We appreciate it. Share some love with someone else this holiday. Use our hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC. And remember, our app is available for download for any Android or iOS device. Just watch us live from your mobile devices with our app from anywhere in the world. Welcome to the show this morning. Now, there's so many great reasons to be happy, to be joyful, uh, but there's a special one for me today. Uh, today is my mom's birthday. Now, um, everyone thinks their moms are special, but mine is extra, extra, extra special. You know, I'm just trying to say my mom is more special than yours. <laughs> Happy birthday, mom. Now, um, let me just tell you a little bit about my mom. For those that um, remember what I used to do, I used to be on the radio for about eight years. And uh, we actually used to host a radio show together called Your Baby and You. Now, we hosted that show for five years in a row together. And eventually when I went to go have my kids, she went to continue the show without me. And everyone is like, are you sure you want your mom to do that? Are you sure you want to leave her go on the radio without you? Uh, and it was one of the best decisions I could have ever made. Uh, working with her, living with her on and off, her helping with the twins has been such a blessing. And um, we love you, we appreciate you, um, God keep you. And uh, God will definitely show you all the joy, all the love that you could ever, ever wish for. And uh, don't worry, I'm still going to build another house for you, you know. I'm still going to buy you that Range Rover. No, 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 don't worry, Grandma. And, uh, well, she's a big fan of chocolate. So if anyone wants to send a gift to her, uh, you can send her some chocolate. But uh, she's on Instagram, at Mommy Totland. And if you go there, you can wish her some love. It's all about the love and sharing all the love uh, this particular holiday with our Muslim brothers and sisters. For those of you who are celebrating, you can also send in your shout outs. Use your hashtag, your favorite hashtag, Wake Up Nigeria on TVC. And um, possibly we'll be reading some of those shout outs out later on on the show. That should be fun. Hmm. For those of you who want to send your own birthday shout outs as well to your loved ones, you can always do that from tomorrow. We'll be reading those out. We do that on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays right here on Wake Up Nigeria. Just don't forget the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC on our social media handles, and we'll find that message and we'll talk about it from tomorrow. It's about time for me to take the news update this morning. We begin with an update on the UK aircraft impounded by the Nigerian authorities last week. Aviation Minister Hadi Sirika says the impounded plane and detained crew of Flairjet that engaged in legal flights in Nigeria have been found to violate Nigerian civil aviation regulations. Mr. Sirika, who posted this on his Twitter handle, noted that the maximum penalty for each of the infractions was 500,000 naira, and both, totals, and both totals millions of naira. Last Saturday, the minister said Flairjet was caught engaging in illegal operations in Nigeria, though it was given permission to carry out humanitarian services as the COVID-19 pandemic persists. It was a solemn Eid in most of the country as Muslims couldn't gather for prayers due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Though some states had lifted the ban on congregational gathering to allow prayers hold today, 
other activities were cancelled. At the end of the Holy Ramadan month is usually celebrated with a lot of fanfare, with Muslims marking the day with mass gatherings for festivities. This year's Ramadan celebration has been hugely altered by the outbreak of the deadly virus. In the Federal Capital Territory, mosques and prayer grounds were empty in observance of federal government's directive. President Muhammad Buhari had a private prayer with his family and urged other Muslims to remain hopeful despite the raging coronavirus public health crisis. Some states relaxed the ban on mass gatherings in order to observe Eid prayers. Kano State, one of the states with the highest number of positive cases, held prayers at the Eid prayer ground. The governor, in an interview after prayers, charged Kano residents to be staggast in observing the COVID-19 safety protocols while performing their religious religious activities with recorded cases of the outbreak in Yobe State. The state have never impounded the lockdown measure in its fights against the coronavirus. At the Damaturu Central Mosque was business as usual. The governor was not at the Central Mosque to pray as usual. Reports say he performed his prayers at the government house. In Sokoto State, the governor had in a broadcast reminded Muslims to imbibe the culture of compassion, honesty, and peace peaceful coexistence. Prayers were also held at the Eid prayer ground with attendees strictly observing coronavirus protocols such as social distancing and wearing of face masks. The customary Salah homage and the Dober, usually celebrated at the Sultan's palace was canceled. In Nasarawa state, the prayer ground stayed shut, but Muslims were allowed to pray in smaller gatherings. Governor Abdullahi Sule observed his Eid prayers in Gudi, Akwanga, local government. While the Muslims celebrated the Idil Fitr, churches in some states like Taraba reopened after the government lifted bans on social ga gatherings and worship places with conditions. Many state governors in the Northeast have the conditions, have the conditions, and they include observing social distancing rule and maintaining other safety rules to curb the spread of the dreaded coronavirus. TVC News visited some churches where social distancing orders were observed earlier. Some churches in Adamawa and Taraba have set up technical committees to ensure adherence to safety rules. Worshippers shared their views with TVC News on the mechanisms in place to protect them. The Northeast governors are optimistic that if these mechanisms are put in place by religious leaders, it would successfully curb the spread of the dead, dead, dreadly, deadly virus. The former, a former general evangelist of Christ Apostolic Church, Prophet Samuel Abiara, has warned against stealing COVID-19 relief materials, saying God has promised to visit those who do so with a terrible disease. He says Nigerians need to prepare for the coming famine, and this can only be done if the federal government shifts its focus from the oil and gas sector to farming and agriculture. The prophet also commended President Muhammadu Buhari's religious leaders, health workers, NGOs, and kind-hearted individuals and organizations for their respective roles in combating the pandemic. He says everyone must adhere to safety guidelines and not panic because the coronavirus disease will soon become a thing of the past. Away from security matters, the Lagos State Government has introduced the Read Aloud Lagos Initiative, which seeks to promote reading culture among primary school students. Also with the competitions. The Director General, Office of Education Quality Assurance, Abiola Seriki Ayeni, says this initiative is to improve learning and inculcates reading culture among school students. She explained that the Read Aloud Lagos was an idea designed to encourage all children within the primary school age bracket to enjoy reading, increase knowledge, and improve their comprehension. We've established this program after noticing that when we go to schools, there is not enough time dedicated to reading in our schools and also outside of our schools. I'm very uh, excited as an educator to really ensure that students uh, are able to see models of uh, adults or even their peers reading so they see how words are enunciated. 
According to her, it also took into consideration the attention span of children. When we begin school, as we know COVID-19 has established the need for school to never remain the same, schools will be different. Learning uh, will be different. Learning will not just be in the physical uh, building, but it will extend past the physical building. So in preparation for, for schooling, for the new learning, we decided that this is a perfect time for us to launch Read Aloud. The Read Aloud project would feature a special edition on the Children's Day celebration where different dignitaries, including Governor of Lagos State, Babajide Sonwulu, would virtually read the website of the office. Excited Americans flocked to beaches and outdoor areas in what was, for many, the first big break from coronavirus shutdowns, forcing some closures on the Memorial Day weekend that signals the start of the U.S. summer. While the Memorial Day holiday that honors the U.S. military dead holds tomorrow, the weekend leading up to it marks the unofficial start of the summer. In Daytona Beach, Florida, thousands of beachgoers crowded the beaches, disregarding social distancing recommendations that have been issued to curb the spread of the virus. As for the Memorial Day celebration, Arlington National Cemetery, which holds veterans of U.S. conflicts, including the Civil War, will be open only to family, family pass holders, who must have a face covering to enter. For the first time in a century, the Memorial Amphitheater will not be open to the public for the ceremony. It's the first time I've seen this many people in a long time. Today it's just my husband and I, so it's a small group for just us. But yeah, it seems like everybody is um, thankful to finally be able to get out and do more stuff. That's like, okay, do you be a thankful to finally be able to get out and do more stuff? That's like, okay, do you be afraid of it or do you go on about living daily life? I mean, you got to hand sanitize and keep clean, but you can't stop living. And for more global updates on COVID-19, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has backed his key advisor, Dominic Cummings, amid a row over the aid's travel during lockdown. The PM says he believes Mr. Cummings had no alternative but to travel from London to the Northeast for childcare when both he and his wife were about to be incapacitated by coronavirus. It follows calls from several Tory MPs for Mr. Cummings' resignation. Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer said Mr. Johnson's decision to take no action against Mr. Cummings was an insult to sacrifices made by the British people. Leaving Downing Street after about six hours in number 10 on Sunday, Mr. Cummings refused to answer questions. Meanwhile, the British Prime Minister said parents and teachers should prepare for the phased reopening of schools in England to start on the 1st of June, as planned. He also announced that a further 118 people had died with coronavirus in the UK across all settings, bringing the total to 36,793 deaths. Okay, now we have quite a few headlines uh, in the papers. Even though the physical papers haven't arrived yet, we're standing by for them. We will be reading some headlines that we found online. Now I have the headlines from the Vanguard newspaper starting us off now. It says here, autonomy for state, legislature, judiciary, lawyers, CSOs split over Buhari's executive order. It also says here, how a teenage girl faked own death to avoid financial pressure from mother. COVID-19, time to restructure now, Afenifere or Haneze Mimiko say. Uh, regional security, Southeast governor's mandate, houses of assembly to enact laws. Herbal medicine suffers, a poor, suffers from a poor disposition to local products, uh, according to Professor Iwu. Uh, White House imposes coronavirus travel ban on Brazil. Still on COVID-19, reports of workers shut down on true, says Luth, CMD. Lagos discharges 45 more COVID-19 patients. Um, it also says here, give Nigerians evidence-based COVID-19 therapies, scientists urge federal government and NAFDAQ. Let me see if we have another newspaper here. Yes, I have this day newspaper. It says here, uh, 
Nigeria, others urge to retool budgets, enhance agri-Greek production. Banks offering access to low interest funds. COVID-19 restrictions confuse travelers. World Bank announces $500 million to fight locusts, preserve food security. Caverton records 30% rise in profit in 2019. And it also says here, impact has been more pronounced in developing countries due to flight, due flight uh, to safety. And uh, hmm. there's a story here called From Madagascar with Love. I wonder what that article would be about. Uh, on the cover of The Punch, we'll find these stories. Um, hmm. In Daboski and the Emperor of Rivers. Hmm. Residents flee Yobe community, fear Boko Haram attack. We didn't barricade Niger Bridge entrance, it says. Southeast governors urge houses of assembly to enact regional security laws. In lockdown, e-learning, uh, federal government violates rights of pupils with special needs. U.S. returnees accuse NCDC of abandonment, threaten protest. FCT shuts nightclubs, arraigns operators for lockdown violations. Office invasion, Minister Dabiri Erewa fights dirty on social media. And uh, let me see if I can take uh, one more. It says here, um, agency to prosecute illegal tax collectors in Cross River. Okay, there's uh, another, uh, well, there's quite a few other interesting ones. If I can take them now, it says here, police kill eight suspected kidnappers in Taraba. Strange disease kills 11 in Rivers community. Bishop chases worshippers out without face masks out of Enugu church. And um, Orni, ex-lawmaker, commend faithful for resilience. Let me see, what else do we have here? Um, hmm, this one is one that should interest uh, sports lovers. I almost quit Barca, according to Messi, Lionel Messi there. And that's what I have. Yomi? Yeah, a bunch of stories uh, that I'm seeing here on the cover of The Guardian. Mm -hmm. uh, Buhari cancels appointments, approvals made by late Chief of Staff uh, Bakhiari. Uh, that uh, looks like a story that just came in. And on the cover of this day, uh, news in photograph, Buhari family hold Eid prayer in State House. Uh, there was a number of uh, related stories that we saw uh, yesterday about this, uh, also on social media. Mm. And, uh, and all of that. Uh, a few other stories. Uh, recap, keep your spirits up in spite of COVID-19, Buhari tells Muslims. Also again in The Guardian, IGP warns against mass gathering during Eid uh, El Fitr and uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, surpassed 5 million cases globally. So basically, I mean, today is a holiday. Mm. And so the IGP is still saying that, look, I know it's a holiday and you guys want to go out to yeah, celebrate, uh, celebrate, go mm. to the beach and all of that. But please, um, you know, just like you know, with the or what, what happened yesterday with everybody keeping their social distance mm. and all of that, it's important to continue doing that today during the holidays. Also, um, Ida Fit, uh, Ida Fitri, uh, keep hope alive despite COVID-19. Clerics, political leaders tell Muslims and all Nigerians, <laughs> really. And uh, still again, uh, panic as Buhari probes Abakiari's office Others. Mm. Wow. The others. Yeah. They In quotes, quotes, a number that, of that list. Uh, who's yeah. on that list of others? Uh, well, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see about that. Then TVC News Nigeria online this morning. A board of police trust fund inaugurated months after President Buhari assented to bill. Mm. And the Daily Sun this morning. Agenda for the new chief of staff. Uh, so there's a breakdown of what the new chief of staff is going to have to do mm. uh, during uh, uh, having taken over office. And the punch, the punch this morning, uh, COVID-19 has affected spiritual, social, economic well-being, says Buhari. Mm. And then uh, finally, I don't know if you have any other stories. With yeah, you. I have here. Okay, so I have, have I have one more here. Mm. Salah, 
Uh, lockdown won't go longer than necessary, says Buhari. That's mm. on the cover of The Punch. Uh, that's uh, good yeah. news mm. for some people there. I have uh, some stories from the Daily Sun here. And uh, it says here, soldiers kill 35 insurgents, recover weapons, communications, gadgets, others in Borno. While we cut 25% of Lagos 2020 budget, uh, Egube uh, says here, Economic Planning Commissioner. Uh, it also says, um, blue chip equities take NSC to five-day winning streak. Mm. Interesting. Um, then there's one here I saw, investors scramble for Nemeth as H1 profit rises by 938.6%. 900, mm. And that's a pharmaceutical uh, company. Yeah, Nemeth, yeah. Yeah. All right, and uh, that's all I can take here. For, yeah, okay, just uh, uh, one or on two more bank. here. Hmm. Uh, Vanguard has the headline. Uh, Transparency, why Buhari National Assembly governors not being straight with Nigerians. Uh, Serap is asking that. Hmm. And then uh, Daily Trust, finally, uh, President Buhari's Gambari Gambit. <laughs> I like the play on words there. Anyway, that's what we have uh, mm. for Daily Trust as well. Yeah. yeah. And that's all we have time for when it comes to the headlines in the dailies at this point. We'll hopefully, taking... hopefully we'll have uh, physical papers yeah. uh, in the next it's hour. It's raining now. It's raining quite heavily. Yeah, we can even hear it somehow. We can hear trickles, not that much yeah. here in the studio. So, um, yeah. last week, we started something really fun on Wake Up Nigeria called Wake Up Nigeria Extra on oh, Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, around, uh, was it around 2.30? Uh, I think Mike and Mary uh, went online live on Instagram. Yeah, and quite interesting. Yeah, apparently it was a lot of fun. And uh, you know how it is going online. You know, you get yeah. to see people, people you know, ask questions, give comments and all that. Uh, yeah, it's also a way of, you know, getting viewers to, mm -hmm. it's also a way of getting viewers to participate yeah, in the show course. and all of that. But we actually really love having you participate in yeah. the show. It's actually one of the reasons, you know, that we love this. Um, and it's going to be a regular feature on Wake Up Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. Now, so let's take um, a look at yeah. um, uh, some, some clips from it. I said um, Jay-Z and Beyonce because they kind of kept the social intensity out of their relationship okay they did and, and without that i think they would have divorced but okay. because they kept that arm's length they didn't then i mentioned jada pinkett and will smith that's for the international side um i think those ones they've been through a lot of storms a lot but they held it down they held it down now bringing it to nigeria are they clear gold and simi uh beauty a beautiful couple we also know that we also can see that what they share socially is controlled. Mm. What they share socially is controlled. And I keep going back to social, 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 because a lot of people are making decisions based on this thing called social media these days. The influence is real. It's invisible and real. You know, you just don't know when subconsciously you are making one decision because of something somebody said somewhere, you know? So are they going to go down and see me? Um, are they swear I'm Banky W? Even though they had the... Okay. Biggest wedding <laughs> that I've seen in a while. Um, I like their composure as a couple. Um, yeah, and um, who else? So, Two Face and Annie Dibia. Okay. Mm. Two Face is so a jolly good fellow. Three film. Nigerian. Mm. That's three mm. Nigerians, yeah. Yeah, so you need so, to give us two more Nigerian. Hey, um, who else? Um, okay, somebody said um, Olu Jacobs and his wife. Okay, Silva. Dr. Silva, yes. Amazing. I think they are that old school love, you know? <laughs> they are that old school love where you, if, you stop, if something is broken, you fix it. You don't just dump it, you know? Mm. So I think they are that old school love. They are a great example because they've been, how many years? Maybe over 40 or almost 50 years or something together, you know? Almost 30. Mm. Over 30 years. I'm not sure. Over 30, sorry, over 30. That's a, that's a lot. This is, people are even struggling to do five years. Uh, but for patients like this, the women have been the ones to exhibit this patient over a very long period of time. Yeah. So people are probably wondering what on earth was going yeah, on there. People are struggling to do it like, five years. In yeah, marriage. yeah. That happens, you mm. know, celebrity weddings mm. and celebrity marriages. Mm -hmm. um, historically. Yeah. Even from the 30s, 40s, and 50s. They know. just had, you know. Yeah, it, it's, not, it's not great. They're always in the limelight. Mm. Uh, it's, lot, it's challenging. Let's, yeah. just put, let's just use that word, challenging, for a lot yeah. of them. So for, for a lot of them. So 
when people get married, if they're celebrities, especially if both of them are celebrities, mm. everybody just expects that, okay, yeah, there's going to be trouble down the line. <laughs> and, uh, but there's some people that have stayed together for a mm -hmm. long time. Like yeah. Tunde and Wumi Obey, for instance. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they were on our show yeah. uh, about two so years funny. ago. Yeah. And yeah, so mm -hmm. th and there are some um, success stories. And then the Goge Africa couple, you oh, know yeah. what I'm talking about? They, they just they blow my mind all the time. And um, you know, you know um, Oscar and Titi Oyinsong, for uh, instance, you know, <laughs> recently wow. celebrated eight years. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, thank so, you, thank you, thank you. You know, being together and you know, Will and our own you Will know, and Jada. It's what? it's not as easy as people think, <laughs> you know. Um, and yeah. you have, to, especially on social media, as he as he was saying. But uh, let's talk a little bit about Pishan. Pishan went like Pishan. Where did this start from? The whole yeah. relationship thing. He, he started out and everybody was like, he's just kidding, you know, it's a joke. And then suddenly people really started following is he his based videos. based here though or still in the UK? I, I'm not even sure I know though in the now. UK, he was in the UK mm -hmm. for a while. And, uh, he's yeah. one half of Skooky. Yeah. Uh, and Skooky, uh, honestly, s some of their songs were major hits way back. But then yeah. outside Nigeria, in other countries, people just really love these guys. Yeah, and they're, 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 we they're didn't quite see it coming. I, mean, I remember the song, uh, that the Pichon song, uh, I yeah. thought it was really funny. Mani <laughs> Anibanga. <laughs> Everybody remembers that like, song. what? <laughs> it, you know, it was the uh -huh. like, have crazy songs like mm -hmm. that that come out, so yeah. But um, he, he, was saying, he was saying some interesting things there. Yeah. And uh, well, it's, it's, there's no formula to it, really, mm. this whole relationship, marriage, especially celebrity marriage thing. But I would, I would love to say that, you know, for me, it's been a great, great journey. It's been a great experience. Uh, it might not be the same for some others. Mm. And it does depend on tolerance, you know, uh, what you're able to tolerate from the whole world, not even just for yourselves mm. now. Uh, but don't worry if you need some tips. Uh, I'll take a, a cue from Pshaw <laughs> and start doing some videos yeah. online, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I but wanted to mention quickly, yeah. um, my mom's birthday is today. One more time. Yes. Happy birthday, Mommy Totland. Happy birthday, Mommy uh, Totland. She's also yeah. a celebrity of sorts. Yeah, uh, yes, so. <laughs> that uh, woman. <laughs> that she's woman. She's got a amazing. radio show um, mm -hmm. targeting uh, mothers and children. Yes. And indeed. it's been it's been on for a while. How many years now? Uh oof, wow, she should be eight years now. No, she eight started years. one year before I had my kids. Yeah. Uh, when I went to have my kids, I was like, ah, oh, that's how the show is going to end. It's yeah. a lie, oh, she went every She went week. and then continued for And yeah. then she became the star, and suddenly I was like, ah, it's my show, mom, it's my <laughs> show. But it wasn't my show anymore. Yeah, um, so happy birthday, yeah. uh, Mommy Totland, and mm -hmm. uh, many blessings. Yeah. And uh, thank you for uh, taking care of our people. <laughs> yes, sir. Please. And their people. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's, no it's good. Ice it's cream good. and chocolate's coming, my God's grace. As long as the rain stops. <laughs> is she at your place or, uh, or she's over she's her house? Yeah, oh, okay. She's at mine. Okay. She's been at mine for a while. Yeah. Um, but she, she's been helping out because of, you know, the whole lockdown. During the lockdown period, I had to still come to work. Yeah. So there was no way with the kids. Huh, hmm. I definitely needed assistance. And she was just there, all hands on deck, as always. Thank you so much. Do, do you see you. yourself doing grandma duties? I have a feeling I will. Hmm. All hands on deck. Yeah, because um, uh, I, I, there's something about my kids learning the things my mom yeah, taught me yeah. that is just really extra special. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so I remember some songs. I can't even remember the songs now, but mm. there's some songs she sings with my kids. She teaches them prayers, mm. uh, and she reminds me to be more disciplined with them uh, because sometimes I'm just like, mm, their children enjoy, let yeah. them be. But then there's some things... I'm not supposed to let yeah. just let be, and then she reminds me. So I definitely, I'll want to do that for my there, kids. There's, and there, there's, there's actually a really deep impact that mm. um, grandparents have on children. Mm. I know there are some there are some uh, children that never met their grandparents. Maybe their grandparents died before they were born, yeah. Yeah. or maybe they're estranged from their you know from their grandparents or okay. from their children. So they don't get to meet their see their grandparents that often. But mm. you know, that mm. for some of us who actually have um, a situation where our kids interact, can stay yeah. and can interact with their grandparents and even go to their grandparents' house and stay mm. for a while. Mm. It's a big blessing. It is. Because, you know, they, they're learning from, you know, from the old. Different generations. And from the new. And also, you know, when you, of course, when you have Story kids in our generation, it's almost yeah. like trying and error. Uh, <laughs> you don't know whether to slap the child or to pat the child. 
no. but with but with uh, with <laughs> grandparents, yeah. you know, they already you know they've raised a number of children, so mm -hmm. they know how yeah. to do things and all of that. Yeah. Honestly, the stories being passed down from generation to generation are also very key. Yeah. Um, stories about how things used to be, you know, old telephones, for instance, how people used to grind pepe, you know, just yeah. stuff like that. Um, you know, there was a time there was no seasoning cube. How are you cooking then? <laughs> you know, those mm. kind of old methods. Uh, and then, of course, old childcare methods, yeah. how to handle a baby and all that. It's, it's, this, it's some knowledge that's really, really uh, invaluable. Yeah. Uh, some, those that have had to go on without that extra care from grandparents, mm. they probably do feel it. Yeah, uh, they, 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 they do feel it. I mean, it. there yeah. are a number of people, I mean, for instance, Barack Obama was raised by his grandparents. Mm. Uh, many people don't realize that because, I mean, his mother was uh, a free bird. So you know, she was here today, married to this guy tomorrow, over in Indonesia and all of that. So while all of that, while, while his mother was globetrotting, essentially, Barack was with his grandparents mm -hmm. and they basically raised him and gave him that respect for other people that, yeah. that composure, his, composure yeah. his approach, you know, that kind of a thing. So everything you see about Barack Obama, yes, he's got a, lot of, a, a little bit of it from his mom, mm. but most of it is the work of his grandparents. Yeah. That composure, that mm. comportment, mm. all of that, you know, of course, apart from the fact that he went to Harvard. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> Harvard doesn't, so, okay, so I, I feel like Harvard doesn't really put that much in except for the network. I don't know. I've never well, been to it, Harvard. It tushes I'm like, you up, man. Are you what? sure it tushes you up? It cleans it's you the up. It's the people you move around yeah, with. I mean, take a look at me. You know that I'm from Unilag. Wow. You know, you <laughs> just, there's just something about it. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the same way that, you know, I'm a QC girl, you know. You know exactly. You that's what, that was, that's mm -hmm. what we're talking about. It's all about being the best we can be in the best way possible. And uh, we're going to be here on that journey with you. Every single morning, people, we have to take a quick break. But we'll be back with more. All right, it's time for some tech updates. Uh, we love tech on Wake Up Nigeria. And uh, we're starting with WhatsApp, which is uh, curious that everybody uses WhatsApp nowadays. Now, WhatsApp's latest beta version lets you add contact by scanning their QR codes. Now, the feature, which is available in beta on both iOS and Android, can be found in the app's settings menu, where there are options to display your own code, as well as to scan other people's. The QR code can also be revoked if it gets shared with uh, someone who you don't want uh, to have your number. Now, it's a minor feature, but adding contacts on WhatsApp can be a pain. At the moment, uh, the service relies on you adding a new contact to your phone's address book, which creates an annoying extra step, which you just want to be able to message someone in WhatsApp itself. Now, QR codes are a much more convenient way of adding someone if uh, you're adding, you're, you're with them in person, although it won't make uh, the process too much easier if you're doing it online. So QR codes basically is this thing. Uh, so this thing that you're seeing in front of you, that's a QR code. So we, on WhatsApp, if I'm standing beside you and I ask you for your WhatsApp line, Basically, you open your WhatsApp and go to your QR codes in the settings, and then you show it to me, then I scan it with, with my own QR code, uh, with my own phone, and then immediately the, your contact transfers to my phone, and it's really, really easy. So I can start sending you messages immediately. Now, on the, in, the, in the old style, it means I have to take your number first, save it, wait for WhatsApp to recognize the number before I can send you a message. So that can take several minutes. So that's a a new update there that you know, it makes things a little bit easier. Yeah, welcome to the second hour on your Feel Good Family Breakfast Show, Wake Up Nigeria. Mm. Today is the African Union Day celebrations. We'll be talking a lot more about that shortly, so stay close. Yeah, we actually mm. should have been wearing uh, some Africa-related clothing. What? Clothing, yeah. Or have some kind of Africa thing. <laughs> well, we Come can on. always make up for it later. <laughs> Maybe we should talk to our producers. <laughs> Dress us up in African gear. 
But thank you for letting us into your homes uh, every single morning. Mm. Uh, we're happy to have you join us. Also, as we celebrate, let's seize this opportunity to share, to give to those who are not as privileged as we are. Since uh, the, it is a holiday, mm -hmm. uh, the roads were a lot freer this morning. Yes, they are. People uh, are a bit chill. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that's how it should be. I mean, the roads are also very wet, like mm -hmm. heavy rains. I saw lots of people at the bus stops. I don't know yeah. why, yeah. but it, it rained overnight, so I, I figured that you know, if you're going out, you would go out with an umbrella this morning. But lots sure. of people were at the bus stops without umbrellas, and I was all wondering. Oh, wow. You know, so, you know, really, really uh, a wet morning. Mm. But thank you for staying with us uh, through the first hour. Mm. And if you're joining the show for the first time, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Uh, the second lap, this is the second hour of the show. This is when things are going to get good. Mm. Uh, remember, as our frontline workers continue to sacrifice and push through, let's play our role by following the public health guidelines. My name is Yomi Obobe. And I'm Titi Lai Oinson. And uh, Mary is in the kitchen. She's looking all bright and beautiful. At really you now? See this <laughs> smile on her face. Hey, you yeah. look like you just made some money. How far now? <laughs> Titi, we are on that road. Yes, we are on sir. a path to greatness. Amen to Expecting that. the best. Amen. And I want to believe that you are, using Yomi's words, prophesying into my life this Amen. week. Amen. Mm. Him. <laughs> Good glory. morning. <laughs> glory, yeah, glory. You guys shouldn't let me start quoting scripture. <laughs> oh, yeah. Isn't it quite Close like Yomi? Because I could do that right now. Yeah, we know, we know, <laughs> we know. Hashtag Yomi, hashtag scriptures, hashtag Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, um, I just want to say to someone out there right now, it's not a scripture, though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you fall, fall on your back. Because when you can look up, you can get up. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Really? Sometimes it's best to follow you your needs. You can get it's up. easier to get up that <laughs> way. Like Yomi, is you that you know you where you got up. that one? <laughs> Yomi's yeah. quotes. We should, oh my we should put that one on Twitter. <laughs> uh, please don't forget to stream the show live on TVCEntertainment.tv and on Facebook at TVC Connect. Yeah, we also have an app available for download, both on the Android and iOS stores. It lets you watch us anywhere you are in the world. Uh, hey, mm. it's yes, Monday. Sir. Yes, yeah, so we're back. It's Monday. Mm -hmm. Everybody's so, looking all serious. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it, uh, that's how it should be. I did. I totally forgot that it was a public holiday. So I yeah, dressed I, uh, like for work. Yeah, just <laughs> looking sharp, ready for work. So one thing about dressing ready, you know, is because you just never know when there might be an important meeting come up, yeah. spring up. You never know who you might meet. So sometimes you just need to be prepared. So this is our business preparedness <laughs> look hmm. look prepared you know? yes you know don't hmm. get don't get caught on uh, I, I always so I had this thing with my wife the other day uh, we're going to go in shopping at the mall okay. so she was like oh let's go shopping I was like okay fine so I go upstairs mm -hmm. and within maybe like three minutes I come back downstairs mm -hmm. and then she sees me she's like ah no me too I'm going to go and change <laughs> 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 yeah yeah just to go to the mall <laughs> you're me I don't know what to say to you I, I'm you know the funny caught, thing I'm about you know the funny thing unawares, about man. guys oh, oh, as they say all you on need fresh. in some <laughs> cases is just a nice t-shirt mm -hmm. exactly and a nice pair of jeans but you see we ladies mm -hmm. the t-shirts might either hug here or it just doesn't show. so at the end of the day you just say you know what let me just wear that dress uh, <laughs> all i did was wear a t-shirt like yeah. i just threw on a t-shirt uh, yeah. and the t-shirt was a white t-shirt <laughs> white t-shirt on dark guys mm -hmm. i just threw on a t-shirt oh, wow. i just Mary. threw on a t-shirt <laughs> i just threw on a t-shirt and came downstairs she was like ah no i'm, I'm, not, going going to, I'm not going to be looking like anybody so, one one. <laughs> so, so it's it's what well, there's some there's one particular occurrence where I didn't make up and I was still wearing an outfit from the event before. So I wanted to go to church mm. the next day. I stayed on the island and I had my church outfit ready and I was the only other outfit with me. So the outfit from the day before was what I was wearing. Mm. And I no makeup, nothing, but I just had to rush to the supermarket for something. And guess what? That was the day Cardi B went into that supermarket. So Cardi B, the international oh, yeah, rapper, yeah, yeah. went into the supermarket that very day. And I saw Daria Talade and I saw the whole crowd. In fact, the teller that was trying to ring up my goods moved. Like, she just disappeared. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, what's going on? Where is everything? And then I just saw Cardi B and then I saw Daria, all them shopping. Yeah. And I was like, my goodness, I don't have makeup on. Ah, oh, I want to take a selfie. I don't have makeup on. I was like, you know what? Forget it. I'm going to yeah. take that selfie anyway. So, um... 
I really wish really? I was ready for that one. <laughs> but <laughs> it doesn't really matter. No, but I, I, I was like, no, not today. Where I feel very un made up unprepared. and uh, unprepared. Well, well, sometimes it maybe happens, it's because yeah. of me. I am. Yeah, I cannot be bothered. <laughs> I know it's a problem for many people where I'm concerned, but mm. all right. On that note, we have to take the news update and we have Ibrahim standing by. All right, thank you very much. Um, I really appreciate it. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control reported 313 new cases of coronavirus overnight, pushing the country's total number of cases to 7,839. Of the 313 new cases, Lagos has 148, followed by the FCT, with 36, Rivers 27, Edo 19, Kano 13, Ogun 12, Boeing 11, Nasarawa, and Delta Ridge recorded eight new cases. Oyo has seven, Plato has six, Kaduna five, Kwara four, Akwa Ibom and Bayosa three respectively, while Niger has two and Anambra one case. So far, 2,263 patients have been discharged, while the country has recorded 226 uh, deaths. Uh, to sum up dates on the UK aircraft impounded by the Nigerian authorities last week, Aviation Minister Hadi Sirika says the impounded plane and detained crew of flare jet that engaged in illegal flight in Nigeria have been found to violate Nigeria's civil aviation regulations. Mr. Sirika, who posted this on the Twitter handle, noted that the maximum penalty for each of the infractions was 500 naira each, uh, 500,000 naira, and both total. Uh, million naira. Last Sunday, the minister said Flagget was caught engaging in illegal operations in Nigeria, though it was given permission to carry out humanitarian services as the COVID-19 pandemic persists. And the federal government is now considering home care for COVID-19 patients as bed space is becoming a challenge. This is especially for Lagos, the epicenter of the pandemic in Nigeria. The Director General of the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, Chikwe Hekwazu, stated that there are about 3,500 bed spaces available for COVID-19 patients across the country. But government is working to make more bed spaces available. And on Friday, President Muhammad Buhari signed into law an executive order for the implementation of the national autonomy of the state legislature and state judiciary. These in accordance with the powers vested on him under Section 5 of the 1999 Constitution as amended. The President says his administration will continue to do everything to strengthen the principles and practice of democracy and democratic governance in Nigeria. Last year, the President constituted a Presidential Implementation Committee on Autonomy of State Legislature and State Judiciary in accordance with the fourth alteration to the 1999 Constitution. The new law seeks to protect the state legislature and judiciary from deprivation of funds by the executive. An now to more up, uh, global update on COVID-19 pandemic, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has backed his key advisor, Dominic Cummins, a major role over the AIDS travel during lockdown. The Prime Minister says he believes Mr. Cummins had no alternative but to travel from London to the Northeast for childcare when both he and his wife were about to, to be incapacitated by the coronavirus. It follows calls from several Tory MPs for Cummins' uh, resignation. Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer said, the, uh, said Mr. Johnson's decision to take no action against Mr. Cummins was an insult to sacrifices made by the British people. Leaving Downing Street after about six hours in November, uh, number 10 on Sunday, Mr. Cummins refused to answer questions. Now, while the British Prime Minister said parents and teachers should prepare for the phased reopening of schools in England to start on the 1st of June as planned. He has announced that a further 118 people had died with coronavirus in the UK across all settings, bringing the total to 36,793. And excited Americans flocked to beaches and outdoor areas in what was for many their first big break from the coronavirus shutdowns, forcing uh, some closures in the Memorial Day weekend that signals the start of the U.S. summer. While the Memorial Day holiday that honors the U.S. military dead holds uh, the weekend leading up to its marked, uh, marks the unofficial start of summer. In Daytona Beach, Florida, thousands of beachgoers crowded the beach disregarding social distancing recommendations. 
that have been issued to curb the spread of the virus. As for the Memorial Day celebration, Arlington National Cemetery, which holds veterans of U.S. conflicts, include, including the Civil War, will be open only to family uh, pass holders who must have a face covering to enter. For the first time in a century, the Memorial Amphitheater will not be open to the public for this ceremony. And that's the news update for this hour. Stay tuned for sports updates now with Mary. Thank you very much for that. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, Timo Wena scored his first goal since the Bundesliga returned from a two-month break amid the coronavirus pandemic as RB Leipzig termed Mainz. The 24-year-old German striker took his uh, tally for the season to 30 with a superb hat trick as, as his side won 5-0 to move third in the table. Elsewhere on Sunday, pressure continued to mount on Schalke boss David Wanya after his side lost 3-0 to Augsburg. Schalke are now winless in nine games and have scored only twice in that run. Two more players from two Premier League clubs have tested positive for coronavirus after the second batch of testing. Players and staff at Premier League clubs across the country received the results of their second round of coronavirus tests on Saturday. A total of 996 tests were carried out in the second round of mass testing, with the number of tests available to each club increased from 40 to 50. All 20 clubs have now carried out two rounds of testing, with clubs due to take part in the third round on Monday and Tuesday. So far, eight positive tests have been returned out of a total of 1,744 tests conducted. Chelsea have reportedly joined in the race for PSG striker Mauro Icardi. Reports indicate that the French giants have rejected initial £53 million offer from Chelsea. The Argentina international scored the League One champions awarded the 2019-2020 title after the season in France was cancelled last month on a season-long loan with an option to buy for £62 million. PSG are keen to do a deal but don't want to pay the full price and with a £53 million bid rejected, Chelsea have been alerted to the prospect of signing the player. Manchester City players have resumed training at the City Football Academy ground after the Premier League gave the green light for training to resume earlier this week. Groups of five can train together after clubs voted unanimously to allow a return to the training grounds league home games at the Etihad. Now, uh, let's talk about Paul Pogba. His agent, uh, Minumai Raiola, has begun talks with uh, Juventus about a summer move to the Italian giants. Pogba enjoyed the best years of his career at Juventus between 2012 and 2016, having quit Old Trafford earlier. The World Cup winner rejoined Manchester United in 2016 for a then world record fee of £89 million. His return to Old Trafford has proved fairly fruitless, with the midfielder suffering a dip in form and a series of frustrating injuries. And that's all we have for you this hour on sports. We'll be taking uh, the newspaper headlines, but that'll be right after this break. There we go. Welcome back. Now, it seems as though the newspapers are still delayed because of the heavy downfall. Yeah, yeah I can just imagine yeah. um, the dispatch rider trying to get, you know, yeah. make their deliveries on, on a bike mm -hmm. in, exactly. in heavy rain. It, mm. it can be pretty... It can be challenging. Pretty daunting, yeah. We still have some headlines from the papers online, though, and uh, we can start with this one. It uh, says on the cover of the Vanguard, uh, Jonathan Gwagi Omwagi gave felicitate with Chief E.K. Clark at 93. It also says uh, autonomy for state, legislature, judiciary. Uh, lawyers, CSO split over Buhari's executive order. How teenage girl faked own death to avoid financial pressure from mother. COVID-19, time to restructure now. Afenifere Ohaneze Bimiko. Uh, regional security, Southeast Governor's mandate Houses of Assembly to enact laws. White House imposes coronavirus travel ban on Brazil. 
Uh, it also says uh, COVID-19 report of workers shut down untrue, according to Luth CMD. Now, Lagos discharges 45 more COVID-19 patients. And uh, I have this one as well. External reserves to hit $36 billion. What do you have? Mm. I've got uh, some headlines here from The Guardian, The Vanguard, and This Day, starting with The Guardian. A panic as Buhari probes Abakiari's office, uh, others. Hmm. And uh, The Vanguard has uh, one of the headlines here. A Buhari not sincere about keeping Nigeria together, says uh, uh, Adebanjo. You can read that story in The Guardian this morning. And uh, This Day newspapers, Idel Fitri. Uh, APC urges Nigerians to imbibe Ramadan lessons. Uh, still on The Guardian, Buhari challenges farmers say no uh, money to import food. Hmm, no money to import food. So farmers are going to be uh, getting a lot of opportunities this year. So uh, this is that time yeah. to yeah. go into farming, TC. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Vanguard, Edo Councillor, Sue's Chairman, others over alleged abduction. And uh, a few other stories. The nation remains steadfast in prayers for one Nigeria. Uh, Uzodima urges Muslims. And uh, Vanguard, once again, COVID-19, Buhari approves medical research funding uh, by TET Fund. And one more story from The Guardian before I hand over to you again. Um, Kaduna can. That's uh, the Christian Association of Nigeria urges prayers against COVID-19. I have a few other stories, but let me just let you take yeah. one or two. I have uh, this day newspaper with me now. Uh, the headlines on the cover are like this. It says, Nigeria others urge to retool budgets, enhance agric production, which is uh, something you mentioned yeah. earlier on. Uh, Egube focus will be on job creation after restarting the economy. It also says here, banks offering access to low interest funds. Uh, COVID-19 restrictions confuse travelers. World Bank announces $500 million to fight locusts, preserve food security. Uh, meanwhile, Caverton returns or rather records 36% uh, rise in profit in 2019. A Liverpool Atletico UCL clash led to 41 additional COVID-19 deaths, it says here. Mm. Um, let me see, what else do I have? Impact has been more pronounced in developing countries due to flight, uh, due flight to safety. Uh, it says, uh, from Madagascar with love. I still want to, I really want to read that <laughs> Yeah, one. that's true. Mm. It's probably a special feature, mm. uh, something yeah. like that. And um, the weeping governor of this era. I wonder who they're making <laughs> reference to with that weeping particular... Governor. Uh, that's a one governor from the South South. Mm. Uh, so but if you want to know who that governor is, go check out the story. Yeah, of course. And <laughs> uh, that's what I have from the cover of this day newspaper. Yeah, I've got a few other uh, headlines here. The Guardian, stakeholders reject APC's direct primaries for Edo polls. Uh, this day, APC faction accuses Obaseki of plotting to scuttle primaries. Daily Trust. Muslims observe Eid prayers in Kano without social distancing. You should have seen the photographs yesterday. Mm. Um, they went for prayers and lots of people, you know, they haven't prayed in together time, in, in yeah. a long time. So not too much social distancing there and it's raising a lot of concerns. Uh, the Punch uh, is reporting, uh, will assist companies to prevent job loss, mm. says Governor uh, Babajide Somolu. And The Guardian, uh, W.E. Erewa Patami disagree over alleged <coughs> eviction of Nidcom from office space. And this was a messy, um, a messy quarrel yesterday that went on Twitter mm. between Abike Dabiri and the minister. So uh, it wasn't funny at all. Uh, Vanguard repairs Lagos government to shut, set to shut down Marine Bridge partially for five months. And uh, these are the stories that I have here with me. Yeah. Uh, let me just take one more from the nation. I faked my death to weight off family's financial pressure, says a mm. teenager. That's one of the stories yeah, that you took I earlier. Mentioned it earlier. You'd, you'd find it in the nation mm. this morning. Uh, 
Anyway, uh, let's talk business. Um, it's Monday after all, and Olua Toby Ali is a dynamic speaker, business management consultant, and author. Uh, he is a U.S. certified gold specialist with an international award in delivering training from the United Kingdom. Now, today he's joining us to talk about key management decisions to help businesses recover. Hi, Toby. Good morning. Hi, Toby. Can you hear me? Hello? Uh, Toby, just, uh, just wave at me if you can hear me. Is this better? Yeah, I can hear you very clearly. Can you hear me? So I mean, it doesn't look like uh, uh, what Toby can hear me yet. While we're trying to uh, reconnect with him, uh, maybe I'll just talk to uh, my ladies in the kitchen as we do as usual. But first, you know, this this is a period where businesses want uh, to come back to work, bounce back. Uh, it's been essentially a lockdown for almost two months. Now, the lockdown started on May, uh, on March the 31st, throughout the month of April. And now, at the end of this week, it will be the end of May. And businesses are just, you know, getting back. They're beginning to reopen. They haven't reopened fully. So there's a lot of challenges um, that, of course, people are going to encounter. And one of those challenges, the major challenge, is that uh, there are many businesses that rely on other businesses to survive. So if those other businesses are not doing well, it means that your business that's relying on their business to survive um, will also suffer if you don't make uh, some certain kinds of changes. So that, that's, that's really, really uh, important. So for instance, if you're a delivery person or you own a security firm or you own a cleaning company, a cleaning uh, or a laundry company or something like that. It can be quite difficult if uh, the company you're working for hasn't opened yet, but you're supposed to be their cleaner. Mm. You know, so it, it can be pretty tough. I don't know what you guys, uh, what, what your take is uh, the, on the, this, uh, the, TTN The number of Mary. people affected are actually broader than what many people think. Mm. Uh, we have to consider so many industries. Uh, take, for example, the hospitality industry. Mm. The hotel business, there's a big hotel I know of on the island whose mm. members of staff haven't been paid since um, April. Mm. Mm. And so it's, it's a challenge for them because they're trying to revive themselves. But let's remember that most of those who patronize uh, many of these hotels are people who come into town for business. So the inability to go in and out of the state is also a problem, especially yeah. for... For them and then we have to also remember the weddings mm. you know uh, that industry events, the events yeah. Yeah. industry yeah. so many people depend on that we think it's just a wedding no. but you're feeding a caterer you're feeding a decorator you're feeding uh, an, an events planner a lights person your, a yeah. dj yes a dj so, yeah. so many people involved and unfortunately uh almost for every six persons i've spoken to in like eight couples uh, most of them tell you that they do not intend to have a big wedding anymore. Yeah, so, so, so it's not like they're postponing yes, the huge wedding. Yes. They've actually just decided, you know what, no matter what happens, it's going to be small anyway. Even mm. if they so wanted a big yeah. wedding, even if they could afford it, there's a guy I know of that he had already earmarked about three million naira for mm. his wedding. Mm. And he was hoping, okay, when people give him money, he would fund the rest of it. The guy said that three million, mm. he was able to take care of himself not, because he's not been paid for like two months now mm. he was able to take care of himself and his fiance with some of the money mm. and so he's saying to himself that if this thing should had extended let's say the wedding had taken place and he had spent that money what would he how have? would they have coped yeah. so both of them have been able to sit down and <laughs> re-strategize telling themselves that you know what <laughs> Let's just forget about having a big wedding. We yeah. can use this money for other purposes. Yeah, so this is I'm, I'm curious to know. I'm curious to know what uh, what TT thinks as well. Uh, yeah, I know that. So I'm actually interested. Yeah. Okay. In, uh, before, before Titi, before you, okay. uh, before I take your take, I, I just want to let me reconfirm if Toby uh, can hear me now very clearly. Hi, Toby. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Good morning. How are you doing? I, I'm good. I'm excellent. I'm excellent. Um, I don't oh, know if great, you heard our, if you heard our conversation with uh, Titi and and Mary just now, 
But basically, we're, we're talking about uh, businesses that rely on other businesses to survive because we don't have that much time. So maybe we should just focus on that for now. So for instance, if I have, uh, if, if maybe I supply restaurants and hotels as part of my business, yes. so my, a major part of my business is yes. to supply restaurants or maybe food or, or fish or whatever it is that they need from me, from my organization. Yeah. Uh, but all, this, all these organizations haven't opened. They're all shut down. What do I do as a business, sure. as a small business that completely relies on most of its income from all these other businesses that are shut down? Okay, so uh, let's just say because all, all of them are, most uh, companies are in the red, uh, what that kind of company will do is I actually have an approach. It's actually innovation that is needed at this time. And what I mean by innovation is uh, there have to be new ways in which they still provide value to those uh, restaurants, to those hotels, you know. And one of the simple ways, let, let me give an example. I actually have something for hotels. So they, now that uh, things are being shut down, locked down, the truth is not many people are meeting, but there are innovative ways in which this can happen. So right about now, if, if it's a restaurant, for instance, a restaurant can be thinking of something like an isolated dining. Now, for those who probably supply them, uh, they might be thinking of having like an idea uh, with hotel or like a restaurant where if those guys actually, uh, if, if most of their clients are business people, they, they can propose something like a business hangout. Hmm. Okay, so it, it looks like uh, the rains are really, uh, the rains are really telling on our on our internet connection this morning. But uh, but I like what he was yeah. saying about uh, having a business hangout uh, in, in in a restaurant or or having yeah. some other kind of. Uh, uh, business connection that opens up to the public. Uh, Toby, exactly. can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Just you can you can you can uh, take it from there. Oh, okay. All right. So what I was saying is, for instance, uh, since people cannot meet physically for now, what they could think of, they could have something like a business networking hangout where everyone meets online, but the food is supplied to them you know, in their homes or in their offices. So those kind of people could actually partner with those kind of, uh, you know, establishments at like that hotel or restaurant, and they could just supply those people. And for the hotels, for instance, if they are even thinking of how they are going to still provide value, partnering with people like that, especially those who probably have like a franchise in different cities, could actually work. So they host the meeting, they host the hangout, but everything is online. So the food is being supplied to them in their homes and their offices by those franchise business people or by you know uh, the food vendors that they have, which will now be doing home delivery or office delivery for their clients, if that makes some sense. Mm. It does, it does. I mean, th these are the kind of things that um, I like to hear, especially for businesses that that feel like like they're, they're they're sort of stuck. Now there are lots of people who also yeah. rely on, say, uh, traffic in Lagos to to sell. Yes. So the, my my business relies on if there's traffic. So it, maybe for instance, uh, I make zobo or, or maybe I fly fry um, plantain chips or, or something like that, and most of my boys go out in traffic. So maybe I have like 20 or 30 boys that go out in traffic every day to go and supply. Yeah. But now. That supply chain is broken. What do I do? Now, the, the truth is this. Eh? Right now, the internet is going to be king. That's the truth of the matter. Um, the roads are going to be less congested uh, because some of the strategies I actually have for, client, uh, for, for uh, businesses is they have to start thinking of remote you know, uh, working. They have to start thinking of people working from home. So those kind of people, what they need to begin to do is the value they are offering, yes, they need where traffic is. Now they need to go to the new place where traffic is. And the traffic might no longer be like on the highways like before, but the traffic is on social media. The traffic is on the internet. So they need to just still find a way in which they can still reach out to those people and they might still be thinking of how they can deliver to them customized service in their homes. So they, they might need to leverage, like I said last week, they might need to leverage on technology. If Pizobo they are talking about now, they might, I don't know, they need to go online. You know, they need to think of maybe joints or maybe like some small groups or groups online that are doing activities like that where they can now partner with them and decide to supply them, you know, their Zobo and stuff like that. Because as it is right now, if people don't upgrade, if people don't innovate, 
many of their businesses are going to die. Many people are even going to, you know, lose a lot of income this season. So they have to start thinking of how they are going to innovate by creating new value and leveraging on available, you know, resources like the internet, like, uh, you know, hangouts where people meet online and find a way to partner. Because right now, collaboration might be also one of the ways in which people will be able to survive this season. Well, thank you so much, Olua Tobi uh, Ali. We, we yeah. only had... Uh, just about five minutes, uh, but I, I, I'm glad that you were able to uh, squeeze in some of that information. Uh, and thank yes. you so much for, for giving us uh, that, that insight into what we must do about our business. So the key thing this morning is innovation. You need to innovate and ensure that uh, you, your business does not die. So innovate, so whatever it is that you do, whether it's planting chips or Zobo, whatever it is, get online. That's where the traffic is. It's not, the traffic is no longer on the roads. The traffic is on the internet. Oluwatobi, our leader, is going to be back with us again next week. We're going to take a quick break and be right back. Thank you for staying tuned. It is time for some Monday motivation. And we have Mary Ogundimu, a conscientious lady, passionate about women development and enhancement. And this week, she will be treating the topic, achieving balance in your endeavors. Hello, Mary. How are you doing? Hello, Mary. Hi, good Good morning. Good morning. Mary, you know, whenever I hear the word... How are you today? Um, very well, thank you. I hope you're doing great. Yes, I am. Very well. Fantastic. See, whenever I hear that word balance, my heart always skips like two beats because it's, for me, one of the hardest things to do in, in the world is to actually balance everything you do. Uh, you know, effectively. So when you talk about achieving balance in everything you do, in your endeavors, really, I wonder, is it possible to pull that off? Yes, it is. Very possible. Yes, it is. Well, that's why we have you here. Teach us how. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you very much, Mary. It's great to be here with you once again. So I've had a lot of people talk to me again anytime uh, this issue of balance comes up. You know, they want to be like, it's really for a woman, all right, or for a man who has um, a lot of caps he's wearing, all right? So they ask, is it really possible to achieve balance, you know, to be that very great business person, to be the person always on point in the family, your financial life intact, your health intact, you know, all of those things you know, being in at least, if not 100%, at least 90%. And I say, okay, yes, it is possible. Why do I say that or how do I mean? So uh, recently I got into a conversation with one of my friends and, you know, we we um, concluded that right now is no longer about time management, but about attention management, mm -hmm. all right? Because we all have the same 24 hours. So the things you pay attention to as an individual is going to determine how at the end of the day you manage yourself, you balance your life, all mm. right? So the things you set priority, how do you prioritize? How do you how do you um, put down your to-do list and then you put them out and then you work according to those things you have put down? Very mm. important. So in achieving balance, I'm going to say that the best thing is to start practicing attention management. What are those mm. things that are very important to you? Put them at the top of your list and make sure you do those things only pay attention to the things that deserve your time mm -hmm. a lot of people waste time doing all sorts of things some people stay on social media for hours some people chat away some people you know see movie i'm not saying it's not good to do all of those things please do them but i'm saying that begin to manage how exactly you devote your time mm -hmm. to those things all right set priorities the things that matter to you face them family matters to you Please ensure that you are available for family. Business matters to you. Ensure you do business the way you should do it. All right? Mm -hmm. What other things are the things that matter to you? Your health is very important, so you take it very seriously. Mm -hmm. All right? So so this this time around, especially this time where some of us are working from home, this is the time to put to, to put everything into perspective. Mm -hmm. This is the time to put everything into perspective. There is no time to waste time. All right, there is no time to waste time. I, you know, I jokingly tell my friends something that 24 hours is not enough. So if 24 hours is not enough, it is high time we started planning our lives the exact way we want it to go. All right. 
All right. Uh, thank you very much for that. I'm so happy that you mentioned working from home. Uh, so there was this belief earlier that if you get to work from home, it means you will have more time for your family. It means it will make it easier for you to create a balance. Unfortunately, as mm. the weeks uh, progress, we see that those working from home are actually even busier than they would have been at work. You see um, a family okay. man, for example, uh, handling like four projects while he's at home. Uh, so he's working maybe like mm -hmm. 14 hours a day. Uh, even sometimes right. uh, the wife might wake up in the middle of the night to see him hard at work, you know, not having time mm. for family things. And then you also see more money being spent. You're filling your generator. Uh, you're also paying so much uh, for internet bills and all of that. And so you, you realize mm. that all the plans you had in trying to balance everything uh, doesn't seem to be working out the way you expect it to. Uh, so for people mm. in that mm. position, what advice would you give to them? All right, great. Thank you very much. You know, you know, for for my married friends, for my married friends, sometimes I'm back to the office. This working from home is not is not it for me because all right. So I feel like um, what we will need to do at this point because we all are faced with this reality. All right, is that uh, we need to now act the discipline we talk about, all right? So I've had a lot of people always, every time you talk, you say, oh, be disciplined, be disciplined. This is the time to act that discipline you're talking about, all right? So if you have so if you have already put on your planner that between 7 a.m. to 9 a.m., this is what I would be doing, please stick to that thing, mm -hmm. all right? If you have on your planner that, okay, between 10 a.m. to 12 a.m., this is what I will be doing, I'll be in this, this meeting, I'll be attending to this particular thing, please stick to it, mm -hmm. all right? The thing that can help us right now is self-discipline because you know you're working from home there is really nobody to you know watch over you to say okay do this do that at what time to do it so mm -hmm. to some extent you have that uh you have that you are relaxed to some extent like okay mm -hmm. fine i'm working from home and the truth is this time is not waiting for you so you you, you should take it the way you take it while you are going to the office mm -hmm. all right take it the way you're going to the office take it as if somebody is there supervising you, take it as because the way it is now, you should be able to control yourself and again give yourself to the things that are very um, important to you. And those ones that are not important, please leave them behind. In fact, at this point, I may even say that it's, it's necessary that you do the ones that are important, urgent, and necessary. All right, important, mm -hmm. urgent, and necessary because some things are really important but they are not urgent. All right, mm -hmm. so in that case, please do the Put those things at the forefront of your to-do list, all right? Mm -hmm. You need to attend to your children. You, you and your wife need to attend to your children. Let there be a balance, all right? We still need at this time we get, because we need to work out the same, mm -hmm. all right? So we will not say because we're in the house or we are working from home, then we would not do the things we are meant to do. So what we need to do right now is to maintain a high level of discipline. It's very important. Mm -hmm. So in maintaining the discipline, there's also the reality that faces you, especially with um, the workload you're, you're now saddled with. Uh, so is it not possible that it might even eventually have um, a drastic effect on one's mental health, uh, trying to create this balance? How can you create the balance without it uh, having to affect your mental health? Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. So. Um, I am one kind of girl that walks around the clock. For those that know me, I, I stay very late, you know, very late up in the night, still working on my system, doing one thing or the other, you know, writing and all of those things. So I get a lot of people tell me, hey, Mary, you know what, this is too much, you know, resting. But you see, so in the midst of all of the work, in the midst of everything that we do as individuals, there is, there, there is that place for mental balance. Because, in fact, there are sometimes I walk to some point and it's like my head is not even understanding anything again. My brain is not even taking anything. I just want to... I just want to go and relax. Please, when you know, when you see that your strength can no longer... It does seem like we have problem with the connection. I believe what she was probably trying to say was um, when you see that your strength can no longer uh, keep up with uh, what is expected of you, then you need to take a break. Uh, so this, this is actually a very tricky subject. You're told to balance everything in your life, but at the end of the day, there are so many things in your life that require a certain uh, amount of um, attention. Uh, your home, for example, as a family person, uh, your children believe, oh, you should have more time for me. But your employers are like, 
you don't know where we are getting your salary from. <laughs> so you better work. And so it can be really tricky uh, to create that balance. Um, th there was a time some weeks back, your me and Titi, uh, when it seemed like uh, working from home uh, was the way forward. Uh, so many of us had to do a lot of, like on Wake Up Nigeria, we're doing just two folks a day. Uh, how are you guys able to really balance your time and really continue to uh, monitor your investments and such during that period? We're online a lot. Yeah, just a lot look, it, it's basically just mm. making sure you have all the information you need at hand yeah. at every point in time. Mm. So you find out how you can get that information mm. and, and then you're good to go. So yeah. whether it's, it has to do with your education, whether it has to do with your business, mm. make sure that you can get all your information in one place at, at a time and, and you're good. What about you, Titi? Uh, it's, it's actually very similar, but we'll talk a bit about that in the next hour because we have to rush all right. we have a few bills to pay. Okay, oh, we'll I must say a very big thank you to Mary Ogundimu for her time. At this point, uh, the second hour is over. 45 minutes more to go. Stay with us, it's Wake Up Nigeria. Well, we've had an amazing two hours already of non-stop information wrapped with family-friendly entertainment. Welcome to the third hour of Wake Up Nigeria. That's right. A positive attitude towards life has never been more necessary as normalcy gradually returns back to everyone, you know, please don't forget to observe the highest level of personal hygiene. Is that a, uh, is that a dynamite quote? Yes, a dynamite quote. You can tweet <laughs> that. You Wear your tweet. mask, everybody. Yes, if please. you're going out this morning. Mm. Uh, now, it's, it's, a, it's slightly colder than other days. Yeah. So the sure. weather change, the weather change could cause uh, some of your kids at home to catch a chill. Mm. Maybe not a cold. Yeah. But catch a chill. So keep the kids warm mm. uh, and, uh, you know, especially those ones that have asthma and things like that. Yeah. Keep them warm so that they don't start coughing or having any issues. It seems like the period. rains have finally come, though. Yeah, the uh, rains are The here. way it rained overnight today uh, and today, it feels like they finally come. So we need to prepare. Mm. And, of course, we care about you and we look forward to giving you nothing but the best every single morning from 6 a.m. Yes, indeed. My name is Yomi Obe. And I'm Titi Lai Oyinsong. You now you've got uh, yeah. options to stay with us online. And one of them is tvcentertainment.tv. The other is facebook.com forward slash tvcconnect. You can always send in those comments, the messages for birthdays, shout outs for this holiday. Of course, we're mm -hmm. celebrating with our Muslim brothers and sisters uh, this holiday as well. If you haven't sent them in, just hurry up and use our hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC. Yeah, speaking of birthdays, uh, Mommy Totland is going to be sending us a cake, right? Uh, well, at some point. I will likely be baking today. I have a feeling I'm going to have to you know, bake the, 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 the bakeries have opened. No, Do, they've give not them some opened. business. No. Give them a little, just a little eh, business. Eh. My baking skills are, they are, they are not bad at all. They're yeah. not bad. Uh, Mary's in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Mary yogurt. has no work to do this morning. Wow, really? Because <laughs> there's an oven there and it works. <laughs> the, really? the, the, the burner also works. We've Are got you pots. Really Mary, Mary is taking this for me. I can't believe it. We got pots and pans and everything. <laughs> and Mary is just, isn't just having it. She's, you know, I, I can't take yeah. off my shoes, you know. <laughs> but I'm trying to be as, uh, you know, prim and proper as usual. Mm -hmm. If not. Anyway. Uh, let's let you know what's going to be happening for the rest of the show this morning. Uh, to wrap up the show this morning, we've got a young Afro pop artist and music producer, Coley, joining us for an interesting chat. Yes, indeed. So on right. Africa Day, mm -hmm. uh, yep. typically, I, I know that typically if there was no lockdown, there was no COVID, yeah. there would have been several activities going on, mm -hmm. not, mm -hmm. not just uh, in Nigeria, but across Africa and yeah. around the world. Yeah. Uh, you, typically, it's, it's a day to celebrate Africa. So you would have had performances, yeah. stage events. plays, events, mm -hmm. fashion shows, the kids displays. would have been done things in school. Yeah, yeah. arts, yeah. art displays. Yeah. And uh, so it's really, uh, you know, it's, uh, Africa is, is really about color. Mm -hmm. All the yellows Very and colorful. the reds and the greens and all of that. So that's not happening 
today and it's not just... I, I was uh, yeah, it doesn't feel the same. Yeah. I, I was telling someone that um, the children born in this period and young folks during this period, we're talking about children and do adolescents as well, mm. might need a bit of counselling. Maybe not a bit, a lot of counselling. Mm. Because this might actually affect their outlook towards life in future. We take for granted that when things are happening in society, mm. at the end of the day, it has an effect on the children. Mm. Yeah, like sponges, they can mm. try to absorb. But when you squeeze, you'll be shocked at how much water, how much um, you know, grief that, and pain yeah. can actually come out. Yeah. Uh, so it, besides just uh, telling the children generally mm. that oh, COVID-19 is in full force, so mm. I think parents need to take the responsibility to check out how their children's mental health uh, actually is at this point. Mm. Some children are not happy to be with mommy and daddy 24 <laughs> seven. Yeah, no, that's, that's the reality. So my, uh, my kids are painfully honest about yeah. this. Um, so we, we, we do a lot of videos that because they're YouTubers, mm. hey, Amber and Ruby unscripted. Um, so online, we get them to talk about different things. And mm. every single time I ask them to talk about COVID-19, they're like, they, they don't want to talk about it. Mm. I'm like, why? They're like, it's, it's depressing. Mm. That's what they, they say. It's depressing. It's taking us away from that, our that's friends. That's actually quite deep. Um, it's, it, we can't go out to play. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't go to the cinema. There's so many things they feel that they're, they're not allowed to do. Then they can't give me a hug when I come <laughs> home <laughs> because I want to go I wash think, my hands. I think you one know? of the things that we also will need to do mm. after this whole pandemic thing mm. is to have a forum for parents. Yeah. Uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. disorder because parents are also <laughs> affected though. yeah <laughs> it's not easy parents are facing care of those children. parents are facing a lot now so um, <laughs> I, I just want to be that person to give you know you a many big parents hug are offering millions to teachers you, how guys, do you guys go you guys we have a, to give you guys a big hug and let you know that i understand <laughs> We have to go for the news update now. Yeah. Yes, parents, we understand exactly what you're going through. <laughs> but uh, we have to hand it over to Ibrahim, who's standing by. Welcome to the news again. The UK aircraft impounded by the Nigerian authorities last week. Aviation Minister Hadi Sirika says the impounded plane and detained crew of flyjet that engaged in illegal flight in Nigeria has been found to violate Nigeria's civil aviation regulations. Mr. Sirika, who posted these on his Twitter handle, noted that the maximum penalty for each of the infractions was 500,000 naira and both totals million naira. Uh, last Sunday, the minister said Flair Jet was caught engaging in illegal operations in Nigeria, though it was given permission to carry out humanitarian services as the COVID-19 pandemic persists. It was a solemn Eid in most parts of the country as Muslims couldn't gather for prayers due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Though some states had lifted, uh, lifted the ban on congregational gathering to allow prayers heard, other activities were cancelled. The end of the Holy Ramadan month is usually celebrated with a lot of fanfare with Muslims marking the day with mass gatherings for festiv uh, festivities. This year's Ramadan celebration has been hugely altered by the outbreak of the deadly virus. In the federal capital territory, mosques and prayer grounds were empty in observance of federal government's directive. President Muhammad Buhari had a private prayer with his family and urged other Muslims to remain hopeful. Despite the raging coronavirus public health care crisis, some states re relaxed the ban on mass gatherings in order to observe the eight prayers. Kano State, one of the states with highest number of positive cases, held prayers are the aid prayer ground. The governor is an in, in an interview after prayers charged Kano residents to be uh, steadfast in observing the COVID-19 safety protocols while uh, performing their religious activities. With recorded cases of the outbreak in the Yobe State, the state has never implemented the lockdown measure in its fight against the coronavirus. Prayers at the Damaturu Central Mosque was, bus was business as usual. The governor was not at the Central Mosque to pray as usual. Reports say he performed his prayers at the government house in Sokoto State. The governor had in a broadcast reminded Muslims to imbibe the culture of compassion, honesty and peaceful coexistence. Prayers were also held at the Eid prayer ground with attendees strictly observing coronavirus protocols such as social distancing and wearing of face masks. The customer Salah Khalmij and the Daba usually celebrated the, uh, the Sultan's Palace was cancelled. And in Nasara State, the prayer ground 
stayed shut, but Muslims were allowed to pray in smaller gatherings. Governor Abdullahi Sule observed his eight prayers in Gudi, Akwanga local government. And the federal government is now considering home care for COVID-19 patients as bed space is becoming a challenge. This is especially for Lagos, the epicenter of the pandemic in Nigeria. The Director General of the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, Chike Hiekwazu, stated this, uh, that there are about 3,500 bed spaces available for COVID-19 patients across the country. The government is working to make more bed spaces available. And on Friday, President Muhammad Buhari signed into law an executive order for the implementation of the financial autonomy of the state legislature and state judiciary. This in accordance with the powers vested in him uh, under Section 5 of the 1999 Constitution as amended. The President says his administration will continue to do everything to strengthen the principles and practice of democracy and democratic governance in Nigeria. Last year, the President constituted a Presidential Implementation Committee on Autonomy of State Legislature and State Judiciary in accordance with the fourth alteration to the 1999 Constitution. The new law seeks to protect state legislature and judiciary from deprivation of funds by the executive. And going on to global update on the COVID-19 pandemic, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has backed his key advisor, Dominic Cummins, uh, amid a row over the AIDS travel during lockdown. The, PM, the Prime Minister says he believes Mr. Cummins had no alternative but to travel from London to the Northeast for childcare when both he and his wife were about to be incapacitated by the coronavirus. It follows calls from several Tory MPs for Mr. Cummins' resignation. Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer said Mr. Johnson's decision to take no action against Mr. Cummins was an insult to sacrifices made by the British people. Leaving Downing Street after about six hours in number 10 on Sunday, Mr. Cummins refused to answer questions. Meanwhile, the British Prime Minister said parents and teachers should prepare for the phased reopening of schools in England to start on the 1st of June as planned. He also announced that a further 118 people had died with coronavirus in the UK across all settings, bringing the total to 36,793. And that's it on the news update on Wake Up Nigeria. Welcome back. Now, our guest today is the director of Art, for, Art of Living uh, Nigeria, Mr. Akshay Jain. He's an entrepreneur and life skills coach. He's also the MD of an IT company, Sumeri, Sumeru Nigeria Limited. Now, he's a passionate about working on social development projects and has been teaching the Art of Living programs for 17 years. Today, we're going to be talking about the African Union Day celebrations that's celebrated globally around the world. Good morning, Akshay. Good morning. Nice to be here with you on the show, Wake Up Nigeria. Welcome, welcome. So uh, I do believe there's an event that's happening uh, today, 25th of May, am I right? Yes, so we've actually we've done a series of events uh, in the month of May and we celebrate a month of May as the Africa month. So today is the final conclusion and we're going to be hosting a YouTube event where uh, countries from all over the world will actually meditate together and uh, pray for peace in the world and particularly focused on Africa. So yes, I welcome everybody to join this. It will be on our channel and uh, we will highlight that today. All right. So what are the key highlights of this particular YouTube event going to be? What are people to look out for when they join? So, you know, so this is a part of I Meditate Africa series which Art of Living has been doing for last uh, seven years. So this is the eighth year running. And we started this with an objective that with meditation, when a person experiences inner peace, that exhibits outside and creates peace in the environment and society. So we believe that with the help of meditation, one can create a great society and unite everybody together. So it's a call for Africa United. And especially this year, uh, because of all the pandemic situation that we are going through, we have made a call as Africa United against COVID-19. And we believe that, you know, it's uh, uh, scientists have proven this, that 
with the help of breathing and meditation one can increase the immunity and once we have a better immunity we can definitely fight against this virus so that's the theme mm -hmm. for today all right um so a lot of people don't really understand what what meditation is all about could you give a layman's view as to what medication uh, meditation rather is actually all about so at a layman's level uh, meditation is the art of relaxation and i would say the the act is it's the art of doing nothing see we are so used to running our mind is racing we are always focused on activity and doing something so when we are able to sit with ourselves do nothing and meditate for a few minutes it relaxes our mind and that has a direct impact on our body as well on our emotions so our emotions become more positive you know today the world is going through such anxious times people have anxiety there is fear of all that uncertainty that's happening so meditation with meditation we are able to relax our mind release stress and have a better healthy mind and body mm mm sounds very very interesting uh, i i feel like uh, somehow meditation is sort of attributed to different religions is this particular uh, session attributed to any particular religion this year well uh, meditation is uh, something attributed to humanity uh, it is an act like you know simple thing as breathing now can you say uh, i breathe differently in africa or uh, differently in india no right so if one has to relax people sleep so sleeping is common to humanity so mm -hmm. same way meditation is not actually attributed to any religion because uh, it is just an act of relaxation right so if you eat chinese food uh, in nigeria that doesn't mean you become chinese right so it True. has no it is a misnomer actually or a uh, wrong guidance that meditation is some other religion i think people worldwide across 156 countries out of the wing has been holding meditations every day have experienced meditation from different race different religions there are uh, christians muslims jews hindus doing meditation and also teaching meditation and yoga uh, without any conflict with the religion in fact i would say it enhances your prayers you know when your mind is quiet and calm your prayer in your church or mosque is even more powerful all right. So I uh, I'm I'm already looking forward to joining this event. Can we give the details about what time it's going to start uh, and uh, the so, the people you're going to have online? So it will be hosted on uh, the YouTube channel Art of Living Nigeria uh, youtube.com/artofnigeria uh, and uh, it will happen at 5 p.m. today 5 p.m. West Africa time. 5 p.m. Nigeria time. 5 p.m. Uh, how long will it? We, how long will it so last? This is a one, so this is a one-hour session where um, we have a personality like Professor Pat Utomi from Nigeria will be joining on this interview. We have Gurudev Shri Shri Ravi Shankar, uh, who is the founder of Art of Living and has been leading this initiative for uh, last 39 years. Uh, will be taking questions from Professor Pat Utomi. We have a uh, Roshan Hasamal. Who is a popular journalist from uh, Mauritius? He's going to pose some questions, and then we have Everson Luhanga, who comes from South Africa. He will be joining us and uh, posing some questions. Uh, this uh, panel discussion will be then followed by a live meditation by Gurudev Shri Shri Ravi Shankar. So one can today take this uh, uh, thing and you know uh, uh, do the meditation together, so you can experience what meditation is. All right. So um, I, I know you've sort of broken it down already, but what is it that you hope that people gain from this particular session today? So we hope that people will uh, gain a little more understanding of uh, oneself and experience how one can relax the mind in spite of all the external situations which overpower us, how we can be relaxed and face the situation with a positive mind. Okay.
So uh, honestly, once this happens, you know, it's going to create some kind of shift. And I know that there's already, from the vis videos we saw just now, we could see that a lot of people have been involved with this over the years. Uh, and, um, you know, it's one of those uh, events that, you know, it seems very, very special because a lot of different groups of people have come together. But do you have any, uh, should I use the word testimonies or any, have you heard any really great stories from people who have been part of this uh, in the past? You know, uh, Art of Living has been taught across 156 countries uh, all over the world. We have centers in almost all major cities across the world. In Africa itself, across 30 countries or 32 countries in Africa, it's been taught. We just concluded a online breath and meditation program yesterday in Nigeria, which uh, was attended by some medical professionals. So I would say a uh, lot of doctors, a lot of universities have done research on uh, the power of breathing and meditation across the world. And they have come up with the uh, fact that it has a direct impact on how our physical system works. Uh, there is a certain thing called vagus nerve, which is touched by this, by breathing and meditation. It's, it gets activated and it gives much more energy that we need um, internally. So uh, there are numerous testimonials. Uh, one can visit the website www.artofliving.org to see what is happening worldwide, what kind of programs are being offered and uh, connect with us. I have to say a big thank you to you, Mr. Akshay, for joining us and telling us exactly what's happening today. So you say it's 5 p.m. on YouTube, youtube.com forward yes, slash. Also Facebook. Also facebook.com forward, yes, forward okay. slash Art of Living Nigeria. Uh, you could easily find it on Facebook. Just search for it and you can get it. We really appreciate your time and uh, I have a feeling it's going to be a really, really great session. Thank you very we much. We look forward to that. Thank you so much. All right. So it is Africa Union Day and it seems like a lot of great events are supposed to be happening in person, but they're happening online now. There is a shift. Uh, speaking of shifts, we have to take a quick break and be back with more on Wake Up Nigeria. All right. So we've got our final guest joining us this morning. Uh, his name is Chukwemeka Okoli, better known as Koli, born and raised in the city of Jos. You know, these Jos guys, you know, they've got something they always, special. Yeah. Something special <laughs> about them. And Koli is an Afro pop and R&B artist who is also a music producer and is joining us today to talk about um, his craft, his new projects, and uh, how he's handling or bouncing back after the lockdown. Uh, I don't know, I mean, has the lockdown even been... As it hasn't ended yet. Yeah, so it's, it's still, still sort of on for, yeah, for some... Uh, for on some. defense. But how are you doing, Coley? Hi, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to have you join us uh, today. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. You look well rested. Looks like this lockdown didn't even affect you at all. It did, though. It did. It just kept me in the home for a while, and it got me eating a lot of food. So I've added a lot of weight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so how have you been coping? Well, I'm just grateful to God. I got myself a home studio before the lockdown started. So I've been making music. So I've been coping. I've been making a lot of music in my home. So that's what I've been doing. I've been watching a lot of movies and eating a lot of food. That's all <laughs> I've been doing. That's good. One of the things that I know has been happening over, over the past few weeks is that we've got uh, lots of artists uh, meeting live. On, on on Instagram, uh, especially yeah. uh, having we, we saw one last night, which was also pretty interesting between um, Mi and NATO uh, C, NATO C, and a bunch of other guys that we've seen, even yeah. internationally as well. Which which ones did you, have you found most interesting in the past few weeks? Well, um, there's there's life. Kidominat's life has been quite interesting. Oh yeah, that was good. Life all the yeah. Time. yeah. Uh, then yesterday, I enjoyed the live by Tony Ednott and Jude Okoye. That was really interesting too. Oh yeah, that most was, that of was the time, yeah, most of the time, I'm I'm on live myself. So I enjoy my life too, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Okay, so Kali, you are you're not just um, into production; you're also an artist, and it begs the question. Mm -hmm. 
um, many people wonder why do producers decide to go into um, music, you know, singing themselves. Which one came first for yeah. you, production or singing? I'm um, singing actually. I, okay. I started off singing um, at the church before I became uh, a recording artist officially. So it was because I wanted to be able to record myself, even without uh, when all producers are busy or when there's no producer available. That was why I learned to be busy or when there's no producer available. That was why I learned production. And by learning production, I mean the engineering, the art of recording yourself, the art of playing the piano, starting off a beat, and then sending it to a major producer that could complete the work for you. So mm -hmm. singing started first for me, and then I had to learn production so I could make music at my convenience, basically. Okay, so which one would you say has been more fulfilling for you, uh, being an artist or being a music producer? Being an artist, being an artist has been more productive for me. It has helped me more. It has, uh, it has put me somewhere on the map that is, can only really go higher from where it is right now. So I think being an artist has really helped me more. Mm. Mm. That, that's, uh, that's actually uh, absolutely amazing. So, I mean, so you know, for, for a lot of people, the, the year is sort of mm -hmm. uh, hitting what you might call a restart. You know, uh, people are looking like, okay, you know what? This year is actually beginning for me from June till December. Um, yeah. what's, uh, what are we looking forward to seeing from Kohli for the next seven months, the end of the year? Well, entertainment generally. I'm, I'm going to be entertaining the world. I'm going to be entertaining Africa. I'm going to be entertaining Nigeria. I'm going to be putting out new songs maybe a new EP or an album, something just to entertain my fans, people that love the Kohli music. And basically, a lot of fun for my demograph. We're going to be having a lot of fun, concerts, performances. By the time everywhere is open, party after party, just a lot of nice stuff to mm. keep everybody going and we start the year from where coronavirus left it for us. Now, some people would say that coronavirus has uh, affected the music industry largely. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, for mm -hmm. you, in what way would you say it has affected the music industry? You me asked you what your plans are for the rest of this year. And so I wonder, mm -hmm. considering the coronavirus effects, how mm -hmm. do you think it would affect the industry for the rest of the year or, and moving forward even? Well, the music industry... Like, you know, it's a music business, you get me? So a lot of people invest in the music industry. So with the global pandemic, that's the coronavirus, a lot of businesses were not moving smoothly. So a lot of musical careers had to pause. I, from, I, I myself encountered it. I put out an EP, but because of the pandemic, there was no proper inflow of cash. So we, didn't, we weren't able to push the EP as much as we would have loved to push it. And uh, I'm sure it happened to a lot of other artists too, because your investor will say, ah, or your investment or your labor will say, ah, there's no money right now because of the pandemic, so we can't push. That's one way. Another way is because of the lockdown and social distancing, there are no rooms for shows, there are no rooms for social gatherings. So, like, the youth are not going anywhere, there are, no, there are no shows for artists right now. So, I don't think any artist that is not making digital money is making money right now. Mm -hmm. you understand? So it's affecting the industry. We need places to be open again. We need shows to start playing again. Mm -hmm. We just need the world to continue running smoothly as it was running before the pandemic, for mm -hmm. everybody to smile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's deep. And that, that, I think that's also very important. That's everybody's prayer right now, mm -hmm. that things get back to mm -hmm. normal and uh, artists uh, can, can start making money again. Mm -hmm. and, and I like what yeah. you said. Yeah which was quite in instructive that if you're not making digital money, uh, well, let's yeah. not call it digital money because that means something different <laughs> in Nigeria nowadays. But if you're not making money uh, online... From your music. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, from that, your it's... music, digital money. When I say digital money, I mean money online from your music. Yeah, and streaming, exactly. streams, streams, and platforms and, and the rest. Yeah. All right, so, yeah. so if, if uh, Kohli was going to evolve, I mean, you're a singer, a producer... If you're going to evolve into something else, would you consider... Acting? Acting. <laughs> if somebody sent yeah. you a movie script and said, you know what, I like your face. I think you, you, you would fit into a part in a, in, in a film uh, I'm shooting. What would you say? I'll take it. I'll take it. You know, because as an artist, 
you have to learn the art of making music and acting too because you have to shoot your music videos. And most of the time, music videos are like, we act in our music videos, yeah, you understand? So acting is something I could also do. So definitely, if I get the script that plays well, that um, doesn't affect my brand as an artist, mm -hmm. like the story or the character that doesn't affect my brand as an artist, then yeah. definitely I'll do it. Okay, so Koli, are you signed to a record label at the moment? Yes, I am. Good. Uh, Factory. I, I'm Flex pretty Factory. sure you saw the trend over the weekend. The whole music, um, the, you know, artist versus record label uh, with yeah, so many so artists coming up to say, this is my experience. So uh, and then um, <laughs> record label owners fighting back and firing back. Uh, what's your take on it, mm -hmm. though? Well, you know, I personally like to see the world differently. Okay. I feel like at some point in everybody's life, we get greedy. We forget the good things that people have done for us. Mm. Do you understand? So artists generally, or no, let me not use the word artist. I like to say human beings generally, yeah? Human beings always want more. Do you understand? So as an artist, when you get picked from the streets or wherever you are discovered, all you want is sometimes to be on TV, to be heard on the radio, to live happy, to make your first 100K. And then after you've done all of that, after you've achieved all of that, you want something more. Hmm. Now, most of the time, it's not easy for the people who are spending money on oh, you, yeah. John Stan. Yeah. So it's just growth, basically. I feel like everybody's right. The artist, the artist actually owns the right to say, oh, yes, okay, I've grown to this level and I want more. And at the same time, the record label has the right to say, bro, chill, we've brought you this far, so believe in us, we can take you to the next level. It just depends on understanding mm. and the motive. Do you understand? The motive why the artist was signed in the first place, the motive why the record label chose to invest in the artist. Did you invest in me because you want to make money? Or did you invest in me because you want to help me? Because nowadays, record labels pick up artists in the sense of, oh, look, we just help them. Do you understand? And then if you take if you take your artist as an investment, you would actually take him to a bigger level than when you just take him as make I just mm. help him. Do you understand? Because if you take him as make I just help him, it would not I feel like you would not have as much it would not be as much commitment as it would be for you when you take it as a serious investment that mm. you feel like, oh, if this fails, then I have lost something dear to me. Mm. I just feel like it's understanding and record labels and artists should have more understanding. So you, had, you, you intend to own a record label someday? Or you're cool the yeah, way you are? I'm cool with my label right now, but definitely when I build my brand to a certain level and uh, I feel like it's time for me to own my own label sometime in the future, then definitely I'll do it. Yeah, nice one, nice one. Uh, good to have you join us uh, this morning, uh, Koli. It's been, it's been uh, lovely you having so you uh, talk to us. And you have uh, lots of uh, words of wisdom uh, that you've been speaking to us there for for younger Thank artists you so especially so uh you know we're, we're going to be following your career for the rest of the year yeah and i uh, wish thank you all you the so best much. thank you so much all right man all right we're going to start rounding off the show now yes it's we been, have it's to been really good i know titi is in the kitchen uh looking like a policewoman just standing by <laughs> we'll just we'll just let you Gosh, take it your away red from is here, so please. popping <laughs> thank you so much uh, now it's been a great show today. It's been really interesting and it's been a very wet Monday. Please drive safely. If you're going onto the roads now, no speeding. You just don't know where those potholes might be. Please take care uh, as you go about your day. Guys? All right. All right. Uh, okay. This is uh, from us over here. Thank it's you so much bye -bye. for watching. Uh, yeah, tomorrow. be sure to join us tomorrow. Bye. bye. <laughs>